Okay, here comes the second segment of the lecture number six. And uh, uh, let me talk about the, the break exercises. <coughs> and the first will ask you to draw the two word lines, one which the clock with the coordinates, which is the clock's at rest and taking away. So this is the first diagram on the left-hand side uh, because the clock at rest, so the word line trace out as a vertical line because of fixed position. And then for fixed intervals, it clicks, so each dot represents a tick. But to an observer that's moving respect to this, so the axis the, after learning transformation, the two axis x prime t prime moved in. And uh, so, uh, so now the clock is moving with a, with a uh, this line is the clock word line, and then taking it away. Okay. Now, the second problem is to display the raw total simultaneity. The two events are seen to be simultaneous in the O frame, in this case, the blue lines. So A and B uh, along the x axis, so therefore, uh, they have T, in fact, it's T equal to, say equal to T A, T B, say equal to zero. So they're simultaneous. In, but in the moving frame, the two axes moved in. Now, uh, T A prime still equals zero because, but uh, uh, T B is now you need to project this on the new T prime axis here, so it's negative. So, so therefore, uh, uh, T uh, A T A prime is greater because it's zero compared to negative uh, uh, T B prime. Now let's talk about the relativity of event order. In particular, sure, it does not violate causality. Okay. <laughs> Remember, we first talked about mentioned the relativity. When we talked about light signals. If not emitted in the midpoint of the red car, uh, it could be uh, arrived in the front end first, then arrive at the rear end. If the train is moving fast enough, it can reverse the order in which the signal can arrive at the rear end before reach the front end. So here is a space time diagram to display this. Okay. I have two events A and B. Okay. And uh, in the in the uh, an original unprime frame, uh, uh, A is equals zero as you take the origin. B is uh, is uh, has the position here X and B and T is a B. Clearly, what it shows is that uh, uh, in the blue line, that's where the T sub B is positive, and then the uh, in the moving frame, the the time coordinate is, is negative, so therefore uh, uh, you have to, the fact that T B is greater than T A in one frame, and T B prime and the, is less than T B. T A prime in another frame, so we have the raw total event order. So this event order has been reversed by going to a different moving, move, by going to a moving frame. Now, we we'll worry that if that's possible, can reverse the event order. Couldn't violate causality if A is the cause of B in one frame. And then uh, you go to another frame, couldn't B becomes the cause of A, you know, like uh, A cause B to happen. If, if we can reverse the order, B can switch, turn off A, and it can never <laughs> bring itself to, you know, obviously, be uh, contradictions. And I want to show that even though you, you can have the relative event order, but the causality can, can never be violated. The reason uh, the event order cannot happen if A is low, uh, if uh, uh, in order to have the order reversal, the, this event B must be located below this X prime axis. Must be in this can only have for B in this region. Okay. For example, if let's look at C. Okay. C is above X prime and the uh, T 
sub C is positive and T sub C prime is still positive. So so compare with A, uh, there's no uh, no reversal reversal of orders. Okay. Now in order for A and B to be connected to event connected, they, the uh, if A is origin, B must located in the time like region is within the light cone because that's the only way you can their cars are connected because connect by signals that travel less than speed of C. Okay, so it must be in this region. But in this region, Lyco region is always above X prime. It can never be because for X prime, for Lyco to be uh, below X prime, it means involved topic of speed greater than C. Okay, so the time like region is always outside the space time region where event order. Reverse is possible, so so therefore causality is safe uh, in relativity. Now, let me give you a, a summary of the, the highlights of geometric formulation. Why? The main lessons of, of uh, geometric formulation is to tell us that the physics arena, where the physics is, is four dimension in Minkowski space time. And in this way, the space times are automatically treated symmetrically. Okay, and this we say is a still is a it's Euclidean metric is is but it's pseudo, so uh, uh, because the, the, the metric uh, tensor is a diagonal four by four matrix with minus one 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 one. Okay, and because this is related to the fact that the invariant length has a minus sign in the time uh, position. Now, the transformation that preserves this length is the Lorentz transformation. So, therefore, uh, once you know this is the kind of length, so you have the transformation. So, the special relative effect, like time dilation, length contraction, relativity simultaneous, all are derived basically came from the fact that you have a metric of this type. So, therefore, in some sense, the metric contains just about all the special relativity. And we say Lorentz transmission can be viewed as a rotation in space and time. And so Phillips equation written as four dimensional tensor equations are automatically Lorentz symmetric, therefore we're optimistic. So that's the reason we, we looked for four tensors for physical quantities like momentum, electromagnetic field, uh, energy moment, tensor, all this just because th this allows us to write tensor equations to so that physics would be relativistic. And uh, you notice the metric for uh, for Minkowski space time is all the elements minus one, one they are constants. So in fact, we show this is, is this is, is a geometrically it's a flat space, even the pseudo uh, Euclidean. And uh, we'll see if, uh, general totally is formed the case when special space time for the main space time is curved. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so therefore, the geometric theory of gravity, which is GR, involves a position-dependent metric. In fact, this position-dependent metric can be viewed as generalized gravitational potential. So, so the metric will play as the role of gravitational potential in the GR theory. Now, all, so let's uh, see how the role of C played in relativity in physics. Uh, First of all, C, and you can see, is a universal conversion factor. Because remember, we say we want to treat space and time symmetrically in relativity. So the way to treat them, if you have to convert space and time back and forth. And C allows you to do that. So this, this universal conversion factor allows space and time to be treated symmetrically. And also the C, you put it here in front of time, allows you to form a quality that's uh, that's Lorentz invariant. So this is uh, uh, this is really the role C plays in in relativity. <clears throat> so in order this to be a, a coordinate invariant according transformation, and then this allows us to view this as as a length factor. And a C is the universal absolute max maximum speed of uh, 
uh, signal transmission. All massless particles, photons, uh, and the, you know gravitons, the, the uh, particle quanta of a gravitational field, they all travel at speed of c. Okay. Now, a particle with mass then move always less than c. It cannot uh, can only reach c significantly because it involves c would involve infinite energy. So the C represents the maximum possible speed for particles. So therefore, in some sense, uh, C really plays a much bigger role than just speed of light. And uh, so some people really suggest we should call C the Einstein speed, not just the speed of light. Okay, this ends the second part.